And good morning and welcome back to the program. You're listening to Sacred Space here in CJUM 101.5 FM out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. We're sitting here talking with Philip Gardner about what we're going to, going to go into now. Uh, this is a newer one of your books, right? This came after Gnosis, Secrets of the Serpent. Yes. As well, there will be a DVD coming out that goes along with the book. It's actually out now. You can, you can get it now. It's not officially launched, but you can buy it. All the links are on my website if people want to go and... Well, let's give that out while I'm thinking about that now. Uh, my website is www.gardenersworld.com. Good. Now, the secrets of the serpent. Well, what is the secrets of the serpent? <laughs> well, we, we, we kind of touched on it before. Firstly, um, people don't realize that um, in ancient times, man worshipped the serpent worldwide. That the snake all over the world was worshipped. Because an awful lot of the time in the Western world, in particular, we... Um, we've demonized it. Um, you know, it's the terrible slithery thing on the tree in the Garden of Eden which, which led Eve astray. And so we've demonized it, and you can go into churches all over the world and you can see, you know, the, the serpent being crushed beneath e- Mary's foot, or you can see St. Patrick um, sticking his staff into them. Um, the truth of it is that that, again, is, is propaganda, what we spoke about before, that there's an awful lot of propaganda, and it's not just governments and companies that do it. Um, religion does it too. Um, and the, the Catholic Church admit openly that they have been guilty of propaganda for an awful long time. Um, they don't necessarily admit that they're still doing it, but there you go. Um, you can go into any church, um, especially in England and Europe, and you can find the serpent. And it's there because Christianity itself is an amalgamation or a, a, a recreation of what was there before. And that just, if you just have to take a few comparisons between messiahs, for instance. You, if you, you say Buddha, he was born of the Virgin Maya, uh, who was known as the Queen of Heaven, and he was born on the 25th of December. Um, Horus, born of the Virgin Isis Mary on the 25th of December. Mithra born on the 25th of December in a cave or manger, announced by a star and three wise men. Um, Krishna, the same. Um, His mother was known as the Queen of Heaven. Um, And you can go on and on and on. And this is found all over the place. And again, it it relates to the sun, to the physical side of things. Uh, But a lot of of this is also esoteric, so it relates to the metaphysical. And it's the same everywhere you go. Um, It's not died out in in the east, the far east because it's still there. We, the Christianity didn't manage to uh, completely wipe it out. And so you can, you can find a direct thread back in time um, with the Naga cults um, in India, um, for instance. The Naga itself means cobra or, or snake. And uh, in Hinduism, there are a great many Nagas. There's Naga Jurna, which is um, John. Um, and he was the... Um, the, the one who came before the great Krishna, for instance. So, like John comes before Christ. And it, 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 the Naga Serpent Call, if you can get into that, you can find an awful lot of uh, truths about our past. So, the Serpent Call was all over the world, and it is the generative cause of a great many of the religions. Um, and it is always in religions. You can, people said to me, well, it's not in Islam, surely, uh, but it is. Uh, there's a prophet, for instance, uh, one of the minor prophets, which was actually, before they gave him a human name, was actually a serpent in that area, and are archaeologically proven to be so. Um, Muhammad himself uh, was very, very ill, tried every um, possible medicine he could, tried asking God for some reason he couldn't get the cure, and he actually allowed them to use snake venom, which brings me back to how I got into the serpent cult in the first place. Um, one night I was I was in bed with my wife. We were having a cup of tea. It was about one o'clock in the morning, and she's she's a bit of an epidemiologist. Um, and she sat there and she said, "Did you realise, Phil, that um, they're researching snake venom um, as a cure for um, various um, immune deficient problems within man?" And at the time, I was deeply into alchemy, and and looking for the supposed elixir of life on the physical level, not the spiritual level. And um, 
it kind of something just it struck me that th there was a truth in this what she was saying and thereafter two years of very very hard research in ancient medical materia and alchemical texts and uh, talking to scientists across the world um, we actually discovered that um, the, the serpent venom and blood of the, of the snake had been used for an awful long time um, throughout history and it, it was actually down in a great many places as the elixir of life because the immense amounts of protein that are in the various forms of venom actually boost the immune system of the body and therefore help us to fight disease and therefore live longer and there are people today um, Bill Haas for instance who actually does inject himself with snake venom and still looks only 30 years old at uh, 80 so th this has been researched across the world in scientific laboratories and even not, not long ago I was emailed by one of the laboratories who had actually managed to get extra funding based upon um, the Serpent Grail book that I wrote which was great, and they'd actually now managed to break down the protein structure of um, neurotoxic venom, snake venom, to um, work out which parts of it were beneficial and which parts were bad. And, and so they were really moving on leaps and bounds. But um, actually managed to find that in, in India, the, the snake venom and blood had been mixed together in a ritual mixing bowl, which was, um, forgive me, but it was the top of somebody's skull sliced off and turned upside down and they mixed this venom and blood in it and, and used to take it as a Eucharist ritual uh, which became known as the cup of the Agatha demon of the Gnostics um, which later e emerged in both physical and spiritual form as the Holy Grail in, in Western tradition. It was actually a tantric skull cup from India wow. um, which is infused with the power of the mind and the power of the snake venom and blood the red and the white, and alchemists, various alchemists knew all about this and left it in their texts. And even America had this, um, sorry to say even America, even the Americas had this, because um, they had um, snake oil recipes that they, they had gathered from their indigenous people. Oh yeah, they um, had the old snake dancers, and, and there's yeah. a huge history of that uh, up here. Massive, yeah. absolutely massive. Snake uh, worship in the Americas is, oh, it's is incredible because you haven't had, you know, 1,500 years of it being wiped out. Yeah, it's all over yeah. the rock carvings. Yeah, it's fantastic over yeah. there. Yeah. I recently found some local to us in some caves that um, actually hit, hit the news. Um, some very, very ancient caves we've got nearby had found images of the serpent. They'd not known that they were there. So it, it's, it's still there, still to be found all over the world, um, especially in the Americas. It's huge over there yeah but it, it you know this this little elixir came through as as various things and 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 you know we, we found in america in the americas that they they were still producing snake oil because all parts of the snake are beneficial even the skin itself is it was used mathematically to to read the stars incredibly because it's such a mathematical equation along the back you know when you when you cut it off and spread it out you can actually use it to read the stars by. Wow. It's incredible, the whole thing of the snake. So physically and metaphysically, out external and internal, there's no wonder that the serpent was worshipped over and above everything else. You know, because people will say to me, well, why wasn't the goat worshipped around the world? You know, why wasn't the, the bull on? The bull was in a specific period, especially the period of Taurus, it was worshipped. But the snake has been worshipped for all time because it's not necessarily just one of the zodiac signs it's draco it is there directly above us all the time it doesn't move the zodiac moves through time <laughs> draco is always there good point in the sky yeah i'm a wood snake in chinese uh, ah yeah perfect <laughs> yeah and my my partner lynn who does the soundboard here she's a water snake or is it an earth snake water ah, snake water yeah. snake you see it gets so complicated but the the more cultures you go into water <laughs> Um, and wisdom and Mary and Mare are all linked. And the Nagas that I spoke about earlier in India, they are said to have disappeared beneath the waves to a place known as Patala, um, which, you know, could be easily be related to Atlantis. Um, they disappeared beneath the waves because this is the place of wisdom beneath the waves. The sea was seen to disappear over the horizon, go into this, this underworld, this world of the unconscious, 
this mirror world of ourselves where things can live but we can't, just like our unconscious state. And it was seen as a world of the dead and a world of wisdom. And it's, just, it's an incredible place, water. And so the snakes are, are linked all over the world to them. And you get back to things like Christianity, for instance, where um, St. Patrick came to Ireland and, and eradicated all the snakes. He kicked all the snakes out of Ireland. There aren't any snakes. Yeah. <laughs> and there never was. Um, what he was actually doing, not him, because there are four Patricks, you can pick which one you want, um, this is symbolic, again, Genocide. of the serpent cult being kicked out. Yeah. The people who worshipped the snake. Um, the same thing applies in Malta, where St. Paul went and, and, and kicked the snakes from Malta. And, and it's found all over the world. Christianity all over the world has replaced this bad story of them getting rid of this old cult. Yeah, St. George and the Dragon. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it's all over the place. You know, and Christianity and Romans came to uh, the UK and, and kicked out all the Druids that we call them now. They were known as Adders. Oh, wow. They were serpent worshippers. Oh, that's, that's Adder. why they were called Adders. The Adder is a serpent. And yet again, the Druids had their, their solar deity, which was crucified on a cross um, once a year at Christmas, you know, and resurrected. Same thing again, all over the world. I found it interesting, too, the whole duality of the cure and the killer. Yeah. Implicit in the nature of the serpent all over the world, the duality, good yeah. and bad, light and dark, you know, even yin and yang in, uh, you know, the Chinese mystical traditions um, developed from two intertwined serpents. Um, the Chinese, the Manchurian um, um, alphabet derived from images of serpents. A great many of, of our, the letters in our alphabet are derived from serpents because language comes initially from drawings, pictoglyphs, and, and many of them were serpents. Martial arts comes from it. Even circumcision, believe it or not, comes from the serpent because the serpent, the snake, was seen to, to slough its skin off and be resurrected. And so circumcision was a direct copy of what this holy serpent was doing. It's an incredible animal, an incredible symbol in, in the history of mankind, and it's, been, it's just been wiped out for no good reason whatsoever. Yeah. At the end of the day, it gave Eve... By the way, Eve comes from the root word hava, which means female serpent. <laughs> it gave Eve access to the knowledge. The only animal in the Bible which talks for itself, using its own voice. And crawls amongst the earth, amongst, amongst uh, Mother Earth. Yes, absolutely. You know, the only other animal in there that talks is an ass, and that's God talking through the ass. So, yeah. You know, that's different. That's God talking through that. The yeah. snake talks for itself yeah, in the I Bible. Yeah, I've based on a much, much more ancient Babylonian myth. 